When this woman was 10 years old, she asked her mother if she could walk to her school by herself, but that would be the single biggest mistake of her life because lurking in front of her was a monster and that monster would make her life a living hell for the next eight years. This is the story of Natasha Kampusch. On the early morning of March 2nd, 1998, a 10-year-old girl named Natasha Kampusch left her home in Vienna, Austria to go to school. This wasn't routine of Natasha by any means, well the waking up early in the morning part was, but not the method of transport. Natasha's mother, Brigitte Cerny, would normally drive her to school, but Natasha wanted to take those first steps in becoming that strong, independent woman she was, so she begged her mother for a long time to let her walk to her school by herself and she finally allowed her. So Natasha woke up early in the morning, got dressed, grabbed her lunch, and headed out the door. As she was making her way to school on the sidewalk, there was this white van parked in front of her, and there was this man standing next to it. The man's name was Wolfgang Preklopil, and despite him looking a bit like a weirdo, Natasha didn't pay much attention to him, and she just walked right past him. Then, out of nowhere, this creepy man grabbed her waist from behind, picked her up, and chucked her into his van like she was a pillow. Natasha started kicking and screaming and doing anything she could to get this creepy man off of her, but she was only 10 years old and her attacker was 35, so he completely overpowered her. Wolfgang started driving the van with Natasha in the back and she was thinking to herself the whole time, where is this guy taking me? What on earth does he plan on doing with me? She then asked him if he was going to grope her and what size his shoes were. Natasha watched the TV shows with, you know, the cops and criminals and she figured if this guy was nice enough to release her, she would have some information for the police to identify and apprehend him. That plan worked exactly how you expected it to. It didn't work at all. Wolfgang drove all the way to his home in Strashof, which is around 30 kilometers from Vienna. When they arrived, Wolfgang ordered Natasha to lie on the ground and he proceeded to wrap her up in a blanket like a burrito. In an attempt to escape, Natasha asked Wolfgang if she could use the toilet and he surprisingly allowed her. The only problem was there were no windows, there was no escape hatch, there wasn't anything. So if Natasha didn't open the door, Wolfgang could have just busted it right open. She eventually came out and was turned into a human burrito again and was brought down to the basement. It wasn't even a basement, it was a straight up dungeon. Just a nicer looking one than the ones they had in medieval castles. The dungeon was small, there were wood panels all over the walls that were light colored. There was a bed on the wall. There was also a toilet that had no lid and a sink along with it. This creep literally planned all of this out. He wanted to kidnap and imprison someone. So he built this dungeon in his basement and looked for a target. And that would unfortunately be Natasha. In another attempt to escape, Natasha politely asked Wolfgang to let her go. She wouldn't tell anyone, but that obviously didn't work. I mean, if this guy was willing to put in all the work of building a dungeon in his basement, he wasn't going to let you leave said dungeon that easily. And this would become Natasha's home for a long, long, long time. Also, if you're wondering why that guy's name was Wolfgang, well, it's a male name used in countries like Germany, Switzerland, and Austria. I don't like the name, but it is a real name, believe it or not. Wolfgang brought Natasha chocolate butter biscuits and some toiletries because she was going to be there for a while. She also got him to read her bedtime stories and kiss her forehead goodnight. Now, I know that sounds crazy, like... Why would you want this creepy guy who kidnapped you to do either of those things, especially the lasher? Because who knows where his lips could have been? I mean, he could have kissed the toilet for all that we know. Well, there was a reason for that. You see, that's what Natasha's mother did for her, and she wanted to make her situation seem as normal as possible. So she wanted to feel less like she was kidnapped and more like she was at home. In the meantime, Brigitte waited for her daughter to return home from school, but she was nowhere to be found. She rang her school to see if she was still there, 
but to her surprise, the school told her that Natasha didn't even attend school that day. So that left Brigitte with no other option but to contact the police and report her daughter missing. A huge manhunt had taken place. The police used sniffer dogs to trace Natasha's scent on that same route she took to school, but that didn't work. A witness then came forward and told the police that she saw a man throw Natasha into a white van and the police now had their first lead. They then interviewed around 700 to 800 white van owners, including Wolfgang himself. He had the perfect alibi ready. He told the police that he was transporting some rubble and he was at home when Natasha was kidnapped. And since the police had so many other white van owners to interview, they just took what he said for granted and he got away with it just like that. In the dungeon, Natasha could eat pretty much whatever she wanted to eat. If she wanted chocolates, Wolfgang would get her chocolates. If she wanted croissants, Wolfgang would get her croissants. He also provided her with goodies such as a computer, a radio, a television, and some books, amongst many other things, to keep her entertained. If she misbehaved, he would strip her off these goodies and remove the light bulb. And that might not seem like that big of a deal, but staying in the dark for long stretches of time is pretty much torture. They would even play board games together like Chinese checkers or Parcheesi and computer games like Space Pilot or Kaiser. And as crazy as it sounds, Natasha asked Wolfgang to play these games with her and to spend time with her in the dungeon because she hated being alone. If this was going to be her new home, she kind of had to be all buddy buddy with her kidnapper. Wolfgang got tired of making Natasha her food, so he brought her a bunch of ready-made meals, along with a hot plate and a cooking pot, so from now on, she'd be doing her own cooking. And if you're wondering how Natasha took a shower, you really don't want to know. No, like, you really don't want to know. But I'll tell you anyway. Wolfgang would bring Natasha warm water bottles, and she would puncture holes in the water bottles to sort of turn it into a shower and she sat on the sink and placed the bottle over her head and Wolfgang scrubbed her like a dog. That was at the start of Natasha's captivity but Wolfgang would eventually allow her to bathe upstairs in the bathroom but he still scrubbed her like a dog. Wolfgang would become more and more controlling of Natasha over time. He installed this timer that would automatically turn the electricity on and off, so that would leave Natasha with around 13 hours of electricity a day. But that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was probably the intercom. Wolfgang had installed this intercom system that allowed Natasha to call him upstairs whenever she needed him. The dungeon was pretty much soundproof, so she couldn't just call him whenever she needed him. Now, I know the intercom might seem like a good idea at first, but it was a double-edged sword. Wolfgang used it to terrorize Natasha. He would call her at random intervals and ask her weird questions like, did you brush your teeth? Did you ration your food? Did you switch the TV off? And he also used it to spy on Natasha. He could press the listen button at any time and he could listen to whatever Natasha was doing. So he was really stripping her from her privacy. Despite his controlling nature, Wolfgang did kind of have a caring side to him. He painted the walls of the dungeon in pink because he wanted to make Natasha feel like she was at home and Natasha's bedroom walls were pink. Wolfgang also installed a proper bunk bed with a ladder and a bookcase for Natasha's books. They would even celebrate Christmas together and Wolfgang brought down some art supplies like drawing paper and watercolor so Natasha could do some painting and keep herself entertained. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Around two years into Natasha's captivity, Wolfgang started bringing her outside the dungeon and into other rooms in his house. Now, he wasn't doing this to be nice or anything. He was doing this so he could torment her even more. Wolfgang lived in this old house that needed a lot of renovations done, but instead of hiring a professional or doing the work himself, he made poor Natasha do the work for him. 
It started off with her just simply cleaning the house, but the labor would become more and more intense. She had to carry marble slabs, lift heavy doors, drag heavy bags of cement, and remember, she was only 12 years old. One time, Wolfgang asked Natasha to get him his putty knife, but Natasha accidentally brought him a different tool. He got so pissed, he picked up a bag of cement and chucked it at her. Now, thankfully, she wasn't seriously hers, but this would be one of the many outbursts that Wolfgang had for no apparent reason. And from that moment onwards, Natasha would be on the receiving end of a lot of beatings. If she wasn't working hard enough, Wolfgang would unexpectedly kick her shins or her side if she was on her knees, and she would be left with cuts and bruises everywhere. Wolfgang also had this weird obsession with Natasha's waist and her hair. He would bring her less and less food in the dungeon to make her lose weight because she was a bit on the heavy side. And as for the hair, Wolfgang was so worried that the police would ransack his place and find Natasha. So he made her wear this plastic bag on her head at all times and when she was finished taking her showers he picked up any remaining hairs one by one and poured caustic soda down the drain to remove any potential dna evidence natasha got so stressed out with this hair situation that she cut her own head with scissors and wolfgang shaved the rest of it with a razor and she would remain bald for several years until wolfgang finally allowed her to grow it back. If Wolfgang wasn't enough of a weirdo, he would become an even bigger weirdo. Wolfgang demanded Natasha to refer to him as my lord or maestro and to kneel down for him because in his eyes she was his slave and he was her master. But Natasha was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. And she was viciously beaten, but she didn't care. She asserted some level of dominance by refusing these stupid requests. Even if it meant she'd get beaten for it, she didn't care. Because she knew she wasn't some guinea pig that you could just walk over. She was a young, strong woman, and she wanted to be treated that way. Around four years into Natasha's captivity, Wolfgang started bringing her to his bedroom to cuddle and sleep with her. Now, when I say sleep... I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking about sleep. Like, you know, the thing you do at night for eight hours a day. Wolfgang tied Natasha's wrists to his wrists and he kept the key for the door on the top of this cabinet that was too high for Natasha to reach. Natasha tried breaking free, but she couldn't because the handcuffs would cut into her skin and Wolfgang's skin and he'd be woken up. He also let her sunbathe in one of the rooms in his house, and he didn't do this to be nice or anything, he did it because it was kind of necessary. Like, you're not getting sunlight if you're stuck in a dungeon, and you kind of need sunlight to survive. Around seven years into Natasha's captivity, Wolfgang started bringing her outside the house. So, she had been in the garden before, but this was the first time in seven years that she was taken away from the property for good. Wolfgang drove her to a forest, and for a brief moment, she was allowed to step outside. She took a big breath, and there was this beautiful scent of tangy wood. She then walked to this tree in front of her, and she touched the tree's trunk with her forehead. She then walked back to her car, and remained calm completely silent on her way back home. The smell of fresh air, the feeling of nature, all that stuff she had been stripped from for seven years made her very emotional. Ever since she was kidnapped, she always pictured the outside as this imaginary world because she hadn't seen it in years. But now, everything was coming back to her, all her memories, her friends and family, Everything. After a few days, Wolfgang drove Natasha to a pharmacy and he allowed her to buy something. She chose mascara because makeup was something she always wanted to try, like any girl her age, but Wolfgang never allowed her 
until now. He was standing behind her the entire time and he threatened to shoot her and everyone in the store if she snitched on him. They were just empty threats though. He didn't actually have a gun. Natasha said hi to the cashier and that was her first time in seven years interacting with a stranger. The next time they went out, they went to a DIY store, but the same thing happened like last time. Wolfgang stood behind Natasha the entire time and she couldn't ask anyone for help because she was terrified. After the pharmacy trip, the beatings became much, much worse. It was so bad that Natasha had no idea what Wolfgang would do to her if she snitched on him. The next time they went outside, there just happened to be a police checkpoint in front of them. Wolfgang stopped the car, rolled down his window, and one of the officers asked him for his vehicle registration and his driving license. Natasha remained completely silent. She didn't say a word. And then she heard the words, thank you, you may continue driving. That was by far her best opportunity to escape, but she was just too terrified to say a word. And the officer obviously didn't know that Natasha had been kidnapped, it had been seven years, and she looked completely different. But on August 23rd, 2006, she would have her moment. Wolfgang wanted to sell his van, the very same wife's van he used to kidnap Natasha. So, he made her clean it. Now, she had done some garden work for him in the past, so he was very comfortable with her working outside without trying to escape. But, this time, it would be very much different. As Natasha was vacuuming the van, Wolfgang got a phone call, so he started walking in the opposite direction. This was Natasha's first time ever since she was kidnapped that she was by herself. So... She seized the opportunity by dropping the vacuum and sprinting away. As she was making her getaway, she came across these three strangers and she frantically told them, Can I please use your phone? I need the police. Long story short, these strangers weren't too keen on helping her. So, she continued running away, but she was so scared that Wolfgang would catch up to her at any moment, because shortly by now he noticed she ran away. So she hopped over a fence and literally trespassed into someone's garden, but for good reason though. She knocked on one of the windows and told the owner she was kidnapped and she needs the police. Now the owner was obviously confused as hell. She was like, who are you? What are you doing in my garden? Like imagine you're just chilling in your house and some girl you've never seen before starts banging on your window and tells you to phone the police. I, I'd be terrified. The owner was a bit hesitant at first, but in the end, she did phone the police, and once they arrived, they took Natasha to the local police station. Natasha told the police the entire story. Her name was Natasha Kampush, and she was kidnapped eight years ago. They then had her DNA tested, and she was indeed the very same Natasha Kampush that had disappeared eight years ago. There was now a huge manhunt for Wolfgang. After Natasha escaped, he just boogied out. For Natasha's safety, she was temporarily kept at a hotel, just in case Wolfgang tried hunting her down and killing her like an animal. Because when you think about it, that's not really out of the realm for someone crazy like him. Wolfgang would avoid justice altogether because... On that very same day, he jumped on some train tracks and he let nature take its course. For Natasha, it was like a big weight had been lifted off her shoulders and she was reunited with her family. She would go on to become a TV host and an author and as compensation for losing eight years of her life, she became the owner of Wolfgang's house. There's not much known about her today, but it is presumed that she's living a normal life. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, comment down below what you want to see next, and subscribe. Until then, see you next time.